So I am excited to just share with you guys a little bit today about what I sense. And I say I, but I think what we all sense, the Lord is continually saying to us right now. And I would really encourage you, if you guys haven't, um, if you haven't been around or if you've missed a couple of weeks here and there, I would encourage you to go back on online and listen, even going back into January. Um, and, and even right before that, I think, or was it in January when you did the vision? stuff or was that in December I can't remember late December early even go back to then and and really the more I keep thinking and praying about what God has released not only on Sunday mornings but on on the Tuesdays that Mark did through I really believe God was giving us really tangible tools to carry in this season and things that is really on his heart for us and do you understand what I mean by that I really feel like there was more to it than just a, a good sermon that Sunday because that's what we do on Sundays is we try to preach sermons. Does, does that make sense? I really feel like he was really aligning some things for us into this year that he really wants us to focus on. And, and I don't know if we knew how, how maybe um, um, how clear that was, but I, re- I really sense that in my own heart and in my own spirit. And so really want to encourage you guys to go back and I'll make reference to it. Some of those things again today, as I did this last week, if you weren't here this last Sunday, basically um, we just talked about the sense that, uh, and, and try to put some language to maybe the season that God has us in, not only as a community, but maybe where we are as a whole and what God's doing with his bride right now. And some of that was this idea of of saying, yes, we are in a season of building. God is building a, a place that will contain his glory for the harvest that is coming. And in that building process, one of the things we sense God's doing right now is he's building a structure. Some of the foundations have been laid in this building, spiritually speaking, but he's wanting to bring structure. And that's a spiritual structure, but it's also a very practical structure in our lives to contain his spirit, to do the kind of work that he wants us to do so we can continue to build his kingdom with him here on earth, right? Uh, but the other part of that was we kind of tapped into this idea that, that we are in a season of warfare at the same time. And, and, and it reminded us of that passage in, in Nehemiah when they're build, rebuilding the walls. They're building a structure for God to come and reside. But in the midst of that, they were on the offensive front to push back the enemy, because the enemy had taken over the territory that God wanted to be in. So in order for that to get pushed out, they had to be on the offensive. They had to be ready. And so we talked about how some of us might feel a little uneasy in this season, but that could be because we're fighting a battle that we haven't fought before while we're actually building into the things that God wants us to build. And as he's bringing an alignment and an adjustment to our lives, to the new season that we're in, it can make us feel a little off center sometimes, right? You guys remember some of this? So I don't want to re-preach that. Go back and listen to it. Like I said, go back and listen to, to Mark's sermons. Go back to listen to what Neil said. Um, and, and, and I think it's going to give you a pathway to what the Spirit of God is doing and hopefully give you some real practical steps on how to move with God in this season. So uh, in all of that, um, you know, we've been talking, and I think it was very interesting, even as God has been forming this morning, um, we, you know, Tana was singing, we just got done talking about singing that, that uh, he is uh, the way maker. You know, last Sunday, we, we, we also talked about we are in this, this transition from the way that things used to be to this new era, to this, this new thing that God's doing. So we're in the middle of a transition, but the, the transition, we have to have a way into that new way. Right? We have to have a roadmap. We have to, when you move from point A to point B, it doesn't just happen. There's a way forward in that, right? Does that make sense? And so I, I really think it's interesting that, that we were singing this morning about the Lord making a way for us to enter in to all that he has for us and declaring that over our lives. And so, uh, because that's who he is, he, he takes us and he moves us from one thing to the next. Um, Yeah, so that's where we're going to go. So I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to dive right in here. So Jesus, I do thank you that you are the way maker. I thank you that you are making a way even now. Mm -hmm. I thank you that we, uh, even if we can't see it, by faith, we um, not just proclaim it, but by faith, we start walking now in your way. And so, Lord, I just pray that we would hear your word this morning and that our faith would increase. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. 
So how do we move forward? How do we pass over? Again, we were using some of these biblical uh, analogies last week of like when the Israelites or the Hebrews, when they were in oppression in Egypt, remember? And then God was moving them into something else. He was taking them on a transition. God led them. He provided a way forward for them. But what did that look like? How did they actually get from point A to point B? You remember, they, they, God pulled them out of Egypt and then they, they walked around for a short period of time and they ended up seeing what looked like a blockade in front of them as the Red Sea. Well, something brought them from that point to that point. But then something else had to take them even across a big obstacle in their life, but looked like there was no way. There was something that moved them across the, the Red Sea into the next season, right? And then we also made some allusions last week to the like transitioning from like God saying, hey, I, I, I want to establish you. I want to bless you. I want to make you my people again. I want you to leave behind the oppression of Egypt. I want you to leave behind that sin nature. I want you to leave behind those things. But now I'm going to transition you into a season of war. Remember how we talked about that? Uh, remember that the story about the 10 the, or the 12 spies that went to go spy on Canaan? How they went out there and, and let's see, 10 were bad and two were good as the old song goes, right? And so, but there was something that happened in that moment. God was making a way and wanted them to step into what their next season was, which was warfare, okay? Which was warfare. He wanted to step into that, but something prohibited them from moving forward. So I want to say all that to say, what is that thing? What is the thing that you and I can grab hold of in this season that actually moves us along in the middle of this transition. And I want to suggest to you today that simply put, it's faith. Faith is what moves us from one place to another. Now, I want to give some credit to where credit's due. Uh, last week after, um, um, after, after Sunday sermon and stuff, Tana and I were talking about it, and we went and listened to uh, another sermon later in the afternoon from an American guy named Chuck Pierce. I don't know if you guys have ever heard from him. And, and so after we were listening to that, I was like, I was like, baby, he just preached this. He just preached my next sermon. And, and we were kind of both talking about that. So some of a little bit of what I'm pulling today, not all of it, but some of it was from just hearing that. But it was almost like the Lord saying, hey, in faith, I'm going to go ahead and give you that next, that, that, that next step from where you went this last Sunday. And so I would encourage you, you can go get online and type in Chuck Pierce if you want to go listen to it. Uh, again, I'm just going to grab a little couple pieces out of that because I really felt the spirit of the Lord helping us uh, give us this idea of it's faith that moves us on through Chuck's message. But you can look that up or I can tell you how to look it up later. So anyways, so what does that look like? And first, I want you to turn with me in Isaiah uh, 43, Isaiah 43, verse 19. And I want you to hold it there for a second. Um, you know, I use those examples real quick um, of the Hebrews coming out of Egypt and taking the journey down to the Red Sea. And it really truly was only by faith, faith in the word of God through Moses that they said, OK, we'll get up and leave and follow you. Right. It, it was faith in a word. Right. From God. Then when they got to the Red Sea. They got there and they were like, what's, we're dead. The enemy's behind us. There's a insurmountable passage in front of us. We're, we're, we're toast. And Moses said to them, hey guys, don't be afraid. The battle belongs to the Lord. Just be still. Just be still. Just watch. But they had to engage and Moses had to engage their faith in the word of God in that moment in order to move forward and through, okay? And then we, again, that example of though, when the nation of Israel then walked around with the Lord in the wilderness for a while, and he brought them to the point of crossing over into their next season of warfare, which they weren't too happy about because they saw giants in the land. Again, there's always obstacles, guys. Whether it's a Red Sea blocking your way forward, or whether it's a giant that's wanting to intimidate you so you don't even, so you turn around and go back the other way. There's always going to be these things in this life, but God uses those things in order for us to move from, and listen to this, from one degree of faith to another. In, in, the, in the book of Romans, Paul writes about that, that we, he is encouraging us to move from faith to faith. 
And see, many of us in this room, we have a measure of faith because it is our faith in Christ, in the work that he did, which saves us. It's his work, but it's our faith in his work on the cross that saves us from our sin, which invites us into this eternal life with him. That's one measure of faith, okay? But, but the Lord's wanting to move us, if you will, along to trust him with even that, so much more of our lives. And, and, and so in order to kind of see the giants that are ahead of us or to see those paths that are blocking the way forward for us, he's going to call us to exercise a level of faith that we've never had to exercise before. But he always gives us that option. He always gives us a choice to make in that moment to see whether or not, God, am I going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart and lean not on my own understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge you in all of my ways and what you will make my paths straight. It's this trust. It's this faith in the Lord that actually opens up the path for us to move into the victorious season that God wants us to move into. Amen. Or to move us from uh, where we've been to where he wants us to be so that we can see and so that he can get the harvest he so desperately wants to reap. But he uses who to do that? You and I. Mm -hmm. He uses workers. That's why Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but what? The workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers out there. So he's looking for workers that have faith in his way mm -hmm. so that they can pave a path in order to step into a fullness of who God is and, in, in, and into his ways so that he can bring about the harvest that he so desires. Right? Isn't that beautiful? But then when we look about the fact that, like, again, when they saw the giants in the land and, and God said, I want you to go into war. And they're like, Ugh, the comfort and the stability of the past looks better than trying to then trusting you to step forward. Again, it was doubt or maybe a better way of just saying it is it was a lack of faith. They couldn't see that God would make a way forward for them in the midst of the giants in front of them. So the God said, OK, that's all right. I'll let you wonder. I'll let you figure it out. I'll work it out in you somehow or another. It may just take longer than another time, than, than, what I, than, than the way I had desire for you. Desire for you. So that's how faith works. That's how faith moves us from one degree uh, to the next. So Isaiah 43, 19 says this. Okay, now the context of this is, um, uh, you know, the prophet Isaiah is, is rattling on uh, to, to the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah about what God is doing, what he's about to do, and then what he's going to do after that. All right, and so he's saying to them, like, look, I know you guys are going to you guys are going to be captive or you already are in captivity by the nation of Babylon. So this is like verses 14 and following. But he's saying to them, but I'm going to take care of the enemy. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. But I want you to see this. Uh, go down to, uh, uh, well, let's just start at verse 14. It says, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And it's awesome that the Lord already says, I will redeem you. That's my name. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, that's, that's what God does. Yeah. It's his nature. He redeems. Mm -hmm. He restores, right? The Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to, for your sake, I have sent to Babylon and will bring them all down as fugitives, even the Chaldeans into the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the mighty man, they will lie down together and not rise again. They have been quenched and extinguished like a wick. Now listen, so he's saying, hey, look, remember, I'm the God who redeems. Remember back in Egypt when all y'all, you know, didn't think that there was a way forward, but I did that. But then listen to this, verse 18. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past. So all of a sudden then the Lord begins to say, look, remember what I did, but what I'm about to tell you it, 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 what I'm about to do next is going to look completely different from what I did then. But remember, my name is still true to who I am. 
I am the redeemer. I am the victorious one. But it's not going to look like the way it did before. So he says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Verse 19, behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If God wasn't doing something new in your life, it wouldn't take faith. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If God wasn't doing something new in your life, it wouldn't take faith. You see, there's a difference between believing in God and belief of God. Okay? I might be saying that wrong. But it's, it's, it's kind of like this. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's this whole conversation around, I can believe in God in a, in, a, in a knowledgeable way. I can believe that he's there, that he exists, that he, that he is who he is. But I don't actually get a belief of God until I've actually experienced the knowledge that I believed in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's a little confusing. So it's kind of like the nation of Israel. Again, to use this example, they believed in their God through the stories that had been passed down. They had a measure of faith because, remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. So they would have heard the stories uh, of Abraham. They would have known why they were there. They would have heard about how God created the world. They would have heard about how God redeemed the world through Noah and the flood. They would have had these stories that they passed around. But this generation didn't have a belief of God. They only believed in God because they hadn't seen him do anything. Okay, so but what happened was God then did all of these these plagues. He did all of these miracles in front of them and he made a way for them. All of a sudden they believed in God. It was no longer a matter. Hey, do you believe in God anymore? Can you imagine living through that period of time, you know, and going all of a sudden the, the Nile turns to blood. And then the next day there's gnats everywhere and the next day there's frogs everywhere. Then the next day after that, there's, there's cattle dying everywhere. The next day after that, you wake up in the morning, everybody has boils all over their body. And the next day after that, it goes completely dark, like so dark that you can't see anything. And then the next day after that, every firstborn in every household that doesn't have the blood over it is dead. It would be hard not to believe in God when those kinds of things happen. So it wasn't that they didn't believe in God, but now all of a sudden they believed of God because they actually experienced his work. But listen, that didn't stop God from continually saying, but look, I'm gonna do something new now, and so I need you to stretch your faith one more time, because now even though I've gotten you out of that old way, there's gonna be another obstacle because I'm leading you into something so I can form you and build you and craft you into who I want you to be as a people. And so I'm gonna to have to push in on that faith muscle again, and it's gonna look different. I'm not gonna do the plagues. I'm just gonna have a guy hold up a stick and the water's gonna part. But you have to partner my, your faith with me in order to step through into the new. So one of my questions for us this morning, if, if we truly do believe that we are in and entering into a new season of our own personal lives and walks with Jesus, if we're entering into that even as a local community here, and perhaps even if the Holy Spirit is moving the church as a whole and the world as a whole into a whole new place and time and era, this harvest season that, Lord willing, we're going to enter into victoriously and not miss out on, that perhaps the Lord is saying, there's a new level or another degree of faith that I'm asking you to exercise today because he's doing something new. But when he does something new and we say, God, listen, I know this is the way that you've done it before, but I'm gonna lay that aside and I'm gonna trust that however you wanna do it. You know, we've, we've said this phrase in here many times before, I, I'm not gonna be offended about how you want to bring about your victory. Mm -hmm. Because again, God's building a new structure so that he can contain the new wine, the new movement of his spirit that he's wanting to do in every single one of us. But in order to step into that and for that structure to build, be built around us, we have to step in and move through or pass over with faith. Let me give you a, a couple examples real quick. 
Well, let me say this first. This now goes back because I think these uh, things that, that, that Neil preached about in January are key for us, specifically in this house. Now, there's going to be more, but again, we can ask ourselves these questions. Do I have faith in God to learn how to rest differently than I've ever rested before? Do I have faith in each other? Can I put my faith in God for what God is doing in the midst of relationships among us? Can I trust, as we say in here, Jesus in another person? Can I take a level of faith to begin to trust the people around me? He, he taught on rest. He taught on the responsibility to each other. And the third one was, can I in faith, can I exercise a greater degree of faith in the place of generosity in my life? Of giving away my life? Can I do that so that the Lord can make a way into our future? One example. Um, and it was just this morning. Tana started off this morning. Um, and she said, I had a feeling of expectation. And she goes, and she began to pray. And she goes, we're going to praise right now for the victory that's coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was by faith that Tana called us to praise for the coming victories. Mm -hmm. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. The substance of things not yet seen or achieved. But it's faith then that draws us right into God's destiny. It's faith then that moves us forward when we can't see it. But it, faith is this then tangible, I don't know how to say it. Anybody can help me here. But it, it, it's the tangible essence that then we begin to clothe ourselves in this faith. We begin to walk in this faith. We begin to, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's a new set of clothes that we take on that enables us to walk into and through what God has for us. This last year, I don't think I've shared it before. It's just another example. Just real quick. This was me personally, right? The Lord told me at the beginning of 2021, he said, Aaron, I want you to give more than you've ever given before. And he was talking about my finances. Now, I think I did. I don't know for sure because I'm not really good at keeping track of stuff. I probably should have. But, uh, but, but even as a whole, we did. We gave more. I'm going to find out soon because I got to do my taxes for the state soon and I'll have to itemize all that stuff. But anyways, so we're going to find out soon. But anyways, I think I did. But so we gave more away than we'd ever given before. But I can tell you that on a month to month basis, we've received more than we've ever received in our life in our lives. By faith, we gave. Not knowing what, was, what God was going to do. He just said, I want you to give more. He didn't say, and then this. He just said, here's the word. Will you partner it with your faith? Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. My hope to you, even in that, is that your faith begins to rise as you hear the word of the Lord in your own life. You know, uh, Phil reminded us this last Tuesday, we were over, there was a group of us praying over at the, um, 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 over at the cottages um, that, that the guys run uh, and, and have and where the farm is, uh, the Lilius farm is running and those kinds of things. We were over there praying and, and in the middle of that, uh, Phil, Phil was reminded about uh, an act of faith. And, and, and I just want to share that for a moment. I don't remember, guys. Do you remember when it was? Was it, was it the autumn of, of just this last year? Or was it? Okay, so maybe September-ish of this last year. And we were just in one of those moments because we go through those moments of going, God, what do we do next? What's the way forward? And, you know, we're human. That's a very common question to ask. Like, God, I can't see what to do, how to do, what you're doing. So we need to exercise a level of faith. Now, listen. Uh, per, several people, even over the entirety of twenty, uh, yeah, of, of twenty twenty one, had given us words about, hey, it's time to expand your 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 tents. It's time to take your tent pegs and move them out. Mm -hmm. And at that time, that was kind of resonating. We were, we were reminded of that. 
And so, like, literally, this might sound foolish, but there's, but when we partner our faith with the Lord, things happen. Yeah. So there was literally a, a fence stake, you know, that your fence post stake that you would drive in the ground, probably about this tall. And we were like, let's just go grab it. And, you know, Phil's like, there's a hammer over there. So we, we just put it in the ground and we drove the stake in the ground. Okay. Now, I don't know the fullness of the ramifications that took place because of that, but within a short period of time, a month, if not more, God started bringing alignment of work and progress to some things that had stalled, okay, on those properties. He started bringing other people in and moving other people in who were then released into their own new way forward. Okay, that's right around the time that probably, I know we keep using them as examples, but that's just because I think God's wanting to, to see a bigger picture of what he's doing. But Liz and Adam, I think they were talking about, it was probably around that time when God started shifting and moving things for them. And it was on that land that we said, God, this is your territory. We're claiming it as your own. And we began to prophesy and declare, God, this is yours. We're expanding your covering. We're expanding your provision over this area. Now we need you to move. And all we did was drive a wooden stake in the ground and pray. And then all of a sudden, it activated the movement, not only of of practical, tangible things, but also of people. Now, this is a powerful moment because here's what I want you to hear. It was, well, first, it was by faith that we did that, okay? It was by faith that we drove that in. But we did it because we've received the testimony of the Lord. And I think we chuckled even. We were like, kind of like, <laughs> you know, like, like and, and recognize the absolute, sometimes even foolishness of what we were doing. But God uses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Because our God's ways are not our ways. Right? But, but, but now, here, now turn over to Romans. Because I want you to see this, this part based upon that example. This is so, I think, I had never seen this before. This is one of those things that, that I pulled from, from Chuck's messages last week. Um, so, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I said Romans, Hebrews. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 11. Makes sense, it's the faith passage. Are you guys tracking so far? Are you guys tracking? Yeah, okay. Um, so, now I quoted this. Just look at verse chapter one. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Okay, again, in all of these places of faith, we are praising by faith, we're giving by faith, we're resting by faith. We are, uh, as, as Moses said to the Israelites, we're going to stand still when there's an army approaching us from the back and there's, a, and there's an ocean in front of us. Foolish, stand still. God's going to do it. Mm-hmm. But by faith, we will stand still. Yeah. By faith, if God is calling some of you to rest, Maybe that means physically. Maybe some of you actually need to do whatever you need to do and go take a vacation as, as, as spouses, as holidays, as a spouse or as a family or whatever. Figure out how to do it. Do it. Amen. But maybe for some of you, it's, it's going, I'm actually have to fight to enter into rest in my, in my soul yeah. because my, I, I've got so much going on up here in my head. I can't enter into that. So I actually just have to give you all of those things that I'm trying to sort and organize in my head. And I have to, by faith, release that to you and enter into rest. Yeah. And for some of you, the Lord might be saying, stop trying to do things on your own. I need you by faith to actually go ask for help from the people around you. Yep. That's that responsibility to each other. Yeah. By faith, I need you to go and surround yourselves and be authentic and go, man, I don't have all my stuff together right now. I need help. That leans into that, the sins, wounds, and demons stuff. Go, actually, to be able to set free, I need, I need to exercise my faith and my trust that I just need to reach out for help and that God's going to provide that help as I reach out for it through other people. <clears throat> or maybe it's just going, I just need to go have fun. I just need to laugh. Hey, guys, we need to laugh. Mm-hmm. We need the joy of the Lord because it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength as we talk about so often in this house, yeah. right? We need to exchange that spirit of heaviness for, the, for, for, for gladness. Yeah. But it's only by faith that we access those things. It's not by doing more ourselves. It's only by faith that we, that we, that we do that. Um, 
So I don't know what I was talking about. Okay. Uh, now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not yet seen. Okay, then listen to this, verse 2. For by it, the men of old gained approval. I don't know why I never, never saw that. But I thank God for his revelation. Um, they gained approval. Um, oftentimes, sometimes you may hear in the church or in church settings, like we talk about the favor of the Lord being upon someone, right? That's what this is. For by it, the men of old gained approval. Uh, and, and I thought like this was a really good differentiation between favor and grace. Grace is one of those things that God gives us and it, his, it's unmerited. It means we did nothing to deserve it. There's nothing that we could do to deserve it. It is God's lavish gift. It's, it's keros. It's a gift. It's, it's, there's, when you give somebody a gift, it's just because you're doing it because out of love. That's what grace is. Unmerited favor to you and I. But faith produces in the Lord a sense of favor and approval towards other people. And we, a lot of us are very familiar with this chapter. If you're not, I would encourage us this week, even as a community, to really meditate through uh, 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 Hebrews 11 and really say, God, because this whole chapter is about faith. It's what we're talking about. And as you read through all of these stories, you're going to see how people put into action faith in God that made a way and a path for them to move forward. It's powerful. Okay. But I don't want to just stay there. But here's what I want to do, because I want, as I just shared some of those examples, I pray that we can add to this chapter by faith, Sarah did da, 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 and made a path forward. By faith, Nolene, da, 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 and it made a path forward. You know, by faith, all, whoever's in this room did this. Because listen, now this is so, so cool. Uh, the very end of Matthew or Hebrews 11, it goes through all this cool stuff. It talks about what faith allowed them to step into, how they were able to conquer kingdoms, how they were able to uh, uh, have children when there was no physical way that they could have children, how to overcome uh, our, um, you know, uh, enemies and armies that they're outnumbered by, all this kind of stuff. And then you get to verse 39 of Hebrews chapter 11. It says this, and all, uh, and all these, the, these men and women, having gained approval, okay, favor through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Now, this is all pointing to Christ, which is what the next whole chapter is about. So I don't want to over, over skip that, right? This, what they were waiting for, it talked about they were looking for a city that had foundations, something that they could enter into, but they couldn't fully grasp it yet. But by faith, they continued to lay a pathway forward for the next generation or the people around them to continue to move closer and closer and closer to the promise that is, of, which is Christ himself. Okay, so now we are on the other side of the cross. We have Jesus, but listen, this is still how faith works. Did you catch it? Because, okay, so, and all these having gained approval through their faith did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us in our generation, whoever's reading this after all of these old great men and women of faith, so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. What's, what's, what's another way of saying that? It's saying that by faith, when a couple of guys on a cold day in Ireland decided to put a stake in the ground, that it brought other people in that were not a part of us, brought other people in to a place to where they could move forward. Does that make sense? So what does that mean? That means this. I need you and you need me to exercise faith 
in the Lord because when you take a step of faith to move into or over into what God has promised for <coughs> your life, then we all get to move forward together. But if you don't exercise your faith and don't move forward, it has the potential to allow us to wander around in the wilderness for another 40 years. Because just like those 12 spies, 10 of them didn't have faith to step forward, only two did. And the majority won. Why? Because if they would have exercised, well, because they didn't exercise their faith, it didn't open up for the next generation to enter into it. So a whole generation had to die off before the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you now another chance to, to cross over the Jordan into your destiny, which is warfare, but you're going to have to use a measure of faith because I'm not going to part the Red Sea. I'm not going to do the same thing to part the Jordan like I did the Red Sea. It's going to look different this time, but you're going to have to exercise your faith in me and step forward into the waters before they even part and trust that I'm going to make a way for you yeah. because it's going to look different. Yeah. Now apply these things to your life. Where are you right now? We're all in this chapter. We are all by measure. We all have a measure of faith. We are all somewhere in Hebrews chapter 11. But how do we move forward? In the midst of kingdoms falling, in the midst of wars and rumors of wars that we actually live in right now, in the midst of diseases and plagues that have covered the earth, perhaps God is wanting to take his people and move them into a whole nother place that they've never been before. But the only way that they can access that place in him and through him for his glory is to exercise our faith in him, in a brand new way, doing a brand new thing that he wants to do in us. Now, I practically can't spell that out for you. But there's probably things, and I'm trusting the Holy Spirit, there's things in your own life. There might be decisions that you're scratching your head that, that your spouse has talked about. Or maybe you as a single person are wrestling through to go, God, what do I do next? How, how, how do I move forward in this? And some of it might be like very, very spiritual. Some of it might just be that like, God, I'm wanting to leave behind, again, the sins, wounds, and demons. And it, it, but it is scary to me. I don't know how to move forward, but by faith, I'm gonna move forward. And maybe at that point, in order to be able to move forward through those things, you have to put your faith in other people to go, hey, I need help. Because you've never done that before. Or maybe you've always done that and you've always gone to other people and the Lord's like, ah, you're actually probably leaning more on other people than you're leaning on me. I want you to get away with just me. Mm -hmm. And by faith, I want you to take a day off this week. I want you to use some, some holiday time and I want you to go up in the mountains and sit with me. Yeah. <clears throat> or go to whatever place is good for you and I want you just to sit with me. And I actually don't want you to read anything. I don't want you to pray anything. I just want you to sit and be in my presence. I guess I don't know what it is for you. And some of it might be very, very big. Some of it might actually be financially. The Lord might be like, maybe put a prick in your heart to do something that you've never done before. It may, it may be generous or it may be going like Joseph. It may be God going, actually, I need you to start filling storehouses right now. Will you trust me? Because there's a time coming when other people are going to need to come to you and then you're going to be generous. But right now, I need you to work harder than you've ever worked hard. I need you to apply all of the things and all the wisdom I've given you through the years because you're going to build storehouses right now for other people. And at the right time, you're going to release it all. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I can guarantee you that uh, like one person after another could come up here today and begin to give testimony the word of the Lord, where the Lord spoke something. It probably wasn't an angelic visitation. God sent us more. Oh, we want angelic visitations. We want probably wasn't, but we want more of those. But, but it's probably a little impression. It, maybe it was a sermon. It was probably a time that you got a little devotional on your phone and you read it real quick right before you're jumping in the car and you're like, ooh, or something on that. Those are probably some of those impressions where God's like saying, meet me in the place of faith and I will make a way forward. For you to enter into this a season of victory to enter into maybe even a season of warfare 
but you're not going to have to worry because the battle's mine. Mm -hmm. And I'll provide everything that you need. But that's where faith comes in. You know, finally, this, Neil said, uh, as he even came up today and mentioned, I don't know who it is, but that does this whole D-Day, V-Day thing. But again, I thought it was, I, th I thought it was interesting because again, he said we live between the fact that Jesus is already, you know, he's already victorious, so we are, but, but we are in the middle of the battle. So we live in this tension of, of, of now, but not yet. But guys, listen, that's the way God's always done it. He's always wanted to partner with his people mm -hmm. to do it. Even in the midst of warfare, even in the midst of battle, and you'd be like, well, why would God call us his people in the battle? Doesn't God want us to be comfortable and nice and have everything that we need and all those kinds of things? Well, that's not really, I mean, yes, we've like, we talked about provision on, on Tuesday nights. There's a level of the Lord's blessing that he wants us to walk into, but he never really told us this life wasn't going to be a life of work. He never told us it wasn't going to be a, a place. It wasn't going to be a place of warfare. In fact, as we read the word and we understand His heart more, but we do all of that in partnership with with Him in order for Him to get the glory that He deserves. And we actually are more peaceful in a place of war than we would be outside of the Lord Himself. That's right. do, you, do you understand that? So that's why like, warfare isn't anything to be afraid of because it's better to be in a war if God's in the battle than it would be to be outside of the war if God's not there. Mm -hmm. You're safer there. You have more provision there. You have more peace there. You have everything that comes with the Lord with, with wherever he is. Right. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm saying I really believe, I would say our house believes that we have entered, we are entering into learning how to war spiritually warfare against the enemy as we build a place in our own lives and as a community in order to see God pour out his spirit in such a way, a new way that we can't be offended by. It probably won't look like Patrick's uh, 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 reformation and revival that took place here back in the 400s and 500s AD. It's probably not going to look like the Hebrides revival that took place over in the, you know, the islands over in Scotland because God's doing something new. So we have to partner with that in faith, no matter what it looks like. But when we're with him in that place, guys, we can be more confident. Because that's what faith is. It's the confidence of the things hoped for. The evidence of the things not yet seen. So... I know this may sound cheesy, but let's do this. Let's just turn, turn, turn to someone next to you and say this, okay? Because we want to we encourage each other and just say this, I need you to step in faith. Yeah, I need you. Do it again. Turn around to somebody else and tell them, I need you to step in faith. I need you to step in faith. Okay. Very good. And, and why is that? So we can all move forward. Right. Amen. So we can all cross over. So we can all enter in to everything that God has for us. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for the gift of faith. I thank you for, um, God, it's even you that, that gives us the faith to believe. <laughs> and it, just, it blows my mind. Your sovereignty is crazy. Your sovereignty blows my mind. I can't even imagine it. And yet you give us free will. And that's where faith comes in. We choose to trust. And that means, as your word says, faith without a choice or a step or without works means nothing. So we can talk about the fact that we have faith in you all day long, but if we never step forward, it shows that we don't have any at all. And so some of us might say, God, we don't doubt you, but we just don't, we just don't step. So God, I just pray right now that, that God, that, that we, well, we just repent as a whole. God, for any unbelief that we may have yeah. on the way forward in our lives. Whatever that looks like, practically, spiritually, holistically, globally, well, yeah, any of it. We, we, forgive us, God. We repent. We, we, we want to change the way we think. We want to turn mm -hmm. from an old mindset and think about the way in which you think 
And so we need your word, God, to come alive to us. And so, God, we submit ourselves to your word because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And so, God, when we read these, these, uh, these testimonies of your faithfulness, God, may it stir us on as we share the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, which is there to build us up, to encourage us, to be able to say, keep going. Because God is faithful to make a way. Because he's doing something new. And when he make, does something new, he calls us to exercise our faith. And then he makes straight paths for us. He makes paths uh, where there were none. He, he makes rivers in the desert where it was dry. God, this is what you do. This is who you are. You are the redeemer. And so God, we don't, would you, would you, would you break off of us old ways of thinking even about you? Would you break off of old ways of thinking about how you're going to do things? Because all that does is get us stuck. Yeah. But God, we, we in faith, even right now, we take off old structures of thought and we lay them at your feet. Yeah. We take it off right now. We take off old mind skins. Would you strip them off of us, Holy Spirit, so that we could be able to think in faith, so that we could be able to feel in faith, so that we would be able to step in faith, so that we would be able to walk by faith, so that we would be able to stand hand in hand with one another and move forward as your bride in faith. And God, I'm reminded right now even about the virgins. The virgins who had to, by faith, keep enough oil around. By faith, they had to keep their, their wicks trimmed because they didn't know when the bridegroom was coming. But some just got tired. Some just got lethargic. Some just maybe said, I'm just tired of waiting. I don't need to prepare. But God, this truly is a season of preparation. So God, I pray that you would help us to gird up our loins, to, to be in a place of preparation, to, 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 to have our, our lamps ready to receive your new wine, to, to have a wick that's going to burn in this season and not one that's already been burnt from last season so that we can be ready for your, not just your second coming, but God, for your coming move to bring in a harvest that is so full of your love, that is so full of your grace that the world has never seen before. And God, we just tell you that we wanna be a part of it. We wanna be those God that are ready. In Ephesians 6, it says to put on the belt of truth The truth of God. The truth is Jesus. The truth is found in the word of God. And he says, gird up your loins. How do we get ready? We have to hear the word of the Lord. We get ready by putting on that truth. It, it prepares us. That belt, we gird up. We're, we're, we're made prepared. We're ready by the, the Lord, the, by the word of the Lord. Because then it produces within us faith. So God, I pray that your written word we would get hungry. God, would you create a hunger in us more for your word? God, I pray that you would release a prophetic spirit. Even during worship this morning, I felt like you said just that there's, that for many in this room, they're going to begin to operate uh, in, the, in the gifts, uh, not just in the gifts of prophecy, but God, where they're gonna begin to hear your voice in ways that they've never heard before and that they need a new wineskin. They need a new structure in order to hear your voice. They need faith in order to hear and maybe some of us in this room who have been hearing for a long time, God, we need to get ready to hear you differently because you're gonna, you're gonna communicate a little bit differently, but that's all because of, 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 your, of you preparing us, God, for the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come to storm the gates of hell and to bring in the harvest for Jesus. Thank you that we get to partner with them. Thank you that we get to partner with each other. Thank you for every single soul in this room, every man, woman, and child, uh, uh, no matter their age, God. This is not, this, this word this morning is not 
about people that are in the prime of their age or whatever that whatever that means. It is for birth through, you know, knocking on the, the, the doors of death. It is for all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are ready to bring us into a greater level of faith. And so, God, we receive it by the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name.